Hello again. So I'm going to look at some of the other remaining 15 markers. Um, we've got a quality of opportunity. Again, just to suggest you do only get one 15 marker for education. So you only do knowledge and AO2, which is demonstrated by this shows. So a quality of opportunity is that there is fairness within the system. That everyone, just check I'm recording and I'm presenting lovely. Um, everyone is treated the same. And they are not disadvantaged. by barriers or prejudice. Got our definition. This is a very narrow 15. So differential attainment, oh, it's a lovely broad 15 marker. Uh, just as long as you're outlining why there's different rates of achievement, it's very broad. I would suggest that there should be class, gender, and ethnicity. But equality of opportunity is very narrow because it's very few people within sociology would suggest that the system is fair and there's no barriers or issues of prejudice. So it's absolutely a functionalist view. So functionalists would argue that there is a quality of opportunity. Uh, really, it's the same as meritocracy, really. Um, so for Davis and Moore, the education system is meritocratic. The system is fair. So Davis and Moore is a meritocratic system. The system is fair. Differences are due to ability. And society is open and it's openly mobile. It can move up and down depending on achievements. For Parsons, it's where we learn that statuses are achieved or statuses must be achieved. And we are all judged by universalistic characteristics slight kind of picking out there of that actually it's where we learn that all statuses must be achieved and we're judged by universalist characteristics not particularistic you Durkheim is really talking about solidarity and togetherness so it's not quite relevant um so i'm going to pop in the three functions um so we learn skills agent socialization etc so this shows that there is equality of opportunity within education We learn, must achieve status. And it's, and any differences are due to ability or effort. It's a fair system. It's where you learn, if you want to achieve the status, you have to achieve it, you have to work for it. And if there are differences within the system, well, that's due to the ability of the child or young person or their lack of effort. Uh, paragraph two, uh, functional, functionalism, then I'd normally go Marxism, but with this one, Marxism doesn't work. They would absolutely <laughs> probably have a visceral reaction to that idea. Um, then I would go, so if done functionalism, yes, Marxism doesn't work here. And then I would go to gender, um, so with gender, yes, we've got Kelly and science uh, package as a boy subject, but you have still got your Mitos and Brown that girls are just more hardworking. So I'm going to argue that some would argue that when it comes to gender in education, there is a quality of opportunity. So I'm going to do Mitos and Brown. 
girls are more hardworking and better motivated. Uh, I, I use it a lot because um, it is can be used in multiple ways. It frustrates me that it just has no sociological kind of theory or suggestion about why that is. So I always quite like to put McRobbie and Garber, who argue that it's largely the bedroom culture that really socialises girls. Um, in a way that would prepare that prepares them. So you know, girls are just more hardworking and better motivated. Um, well, first of all, really, um, and also if that's the case, why? So with McRobbie and Garble, that bedroom culture really tends to socialise girls in a way that prepares them for education. It teaches them often to be quiet, to sit still. Um, and uh, allegedly kind of helps improve their communication skills. But um, Mitchell Brown with a little bit of Robbie Garber to give it arguably a bit more substance. Um, that Harris et al. Oops. That secondary school females tended to be more hardworking, uh, more motivated. Whereas uh, the boys in their study had struggle, uh, struggled with revision and organisation. And then for Francis, uh, many boys think education is irrelevant and adopt an identity of effortless achievement. So this shows that there is a quality of opportunity, or well, there may be. <laughs> equality of opportunity in education now um, and this may explain uh, the 9.1 percent difference in achievement as girls may be working harder due to socialization and so maybe working harder due to socialization I don't know and higher expectations a bit of education in there with the maybe just a bit of gender quake and act and all those lovely things right so it's really two paragraphs there isn't any other theorists who would suggest that there is a quality of opportunity so I know I say we aim for three sociologists um, with three paragraphs sometimes they're very narrow 15s and it's not physically possible but it would still have range and it's still got the analysis there so social selection This has never come up. I quite like it. Um, but uh, yeah, once you really know the definition, I think it's quite nice. But social selection is um, when the different actions of agencies, which is individuals or teachers, when the different actions of agencies, so individuals or teachers, or social conditions, the environment, impact on rates of achievement. That the different actions of agencies, so individuals or teachers, or social conditions, the environment can impact upon rates of achievement. Achievement. So it's good to have that definition. So paragraph one is going to be that social conditions can lead to social selection. So the environment or social conditions can lead to social selection. So material deprivation, 
is an environmental factor or social conditions that lead to uh, selection. So material deprivation, so I do Smith and Noble, always with Forsyth and Furlong. Helps memory when you connect them, along with a catchment area, which is just to remind you the area where schools or colleges draw their pupils. Schools in more socially deprived areas uh, can find themselves with a much higher turnover of teachers and sometimes issues with discipline. Uh, schools with more socially deprived areas tend to have much higher rates of poverty, uh, arguably higher rates of crime, and that can lead to obviously students not focusing on Pythagoras because sometimes they've got other things to focus on that are slightly more pressing. But it can lead to a higher turnover of teachers and can lead to discipline problems. And that's what can reduce the quality of learning, disruption and attendance. Those students should say just poor quality teaching, which again, I made that point in my previous video. It's a very simplistic thing to say, and it's not entirely fair or accurate. So you do need to show that those schools and socially deprived areas have very good reason for perhaps lower rates of achievement. Uh, so we empathise, but we are only try not to make excuses. So this shows that um, social selection can happen um, when some groups may struggle to, so some learners may struggle to concentrate. They may have higher rates of sickness and higher turnovers of teachers and this can lead to poor quality results. So social selection and the environment may lead to students being then struggling to concentrate due to lack of breakfast, higher rates of sickness due to poor quality housing and a much higher turnover of teachers and that's what leads to the poor quality of results. At least Marcus Rashford's trying to feed the nation's free school meals children. Okay, so paragraph two. So I've done the social conditions in paragraph one. So in paragraph two, I'm going to do agency, so individuals or teachers, so that there is often social selection as a result of the actions of agencies uh, like teachers. So here I'm going to go to, so Becca, and that working class students are often labelled, placed into bottom set, where they internalise, accept failure, and self-fulfil as a result. Oh. <laughs> They're often labelled, placed into bottom set, where they internalize, internalizing is accepting the failure. Well, I might as well not try because I'm not very bright. They accept that failure and thus to self fulfill the prophecy as a result. You could do Hargreaves here that the judgment of ability is often based on the homes. Uh, Ray, children as young as 10 are already starting to internalize. Think of poor Sharon. Um, you can do that, or I really like studying um those sociologists are perfect i'm also i personally would do gilborn black males are often seen as a threat disruptive they're three times more likely to be excluded uh and pilkington i always br bridge those two together evidence of racially discriminatory practices You can choose. It can be an all blue one if you want, all, all class, or you can mix it with a little bit of ethnicity. So this shows that there is social selection when students are placed into bottom set, 
it restricts their grades. Social selection can happen when students are placed into bottom sets where their grades are physically restricted and they ultimately, ultimately may internalize and no longer try. Always really interesting, again, you can't evaluate here and use Mirza or Blackman, but it is always really interesting that Beck is talking about, you know, there's working class groups, fulfilling, giving up, no longer trying. Uh, I suppose Gilborn's point is absolutely the same when it comes to particularly black males, but it's the added dimension of the, the I mean, the microaggression and racist trope that black men are seen as more aggressive or angry, which is why it leads to high rates of exclusion. But it is always very interesting then when it comes to women of color and particularly Afro-Caribbean girls, that they resist in spite of that. And it's still a microaggression and a racist trope that we don't afford uh, black women in particular. Uh, a spectrum of emotions is often again reduced to anger. So it's always very interesting that it doesn't apply very well to uh, black girls, just as a random note there. So actions of agencies, no evaluation, even though I'm quite tempted to there. So uh, paragraph three, I'm going to do a mixture of here. I'm going to do gender because I've got class and I've got a little bit of ethnicity and class and then gender. So paragraph three, that there can be social selection when it comes to gender. So I'm going to do mitos and brown. By this point, you're probably thinking mitos and brown are in everything. Uh, the social selection for mitos and brown. I'm going to pick up on here that teachers are less strict with boys, give them more leeway with deadlines expect lower standards. For Sewell, in the environment point, there's an issue with the feminization of education. As only one in six primary school teachers are male, and it often gives girls an advantage, but can alienate boys. I'm sure many women feel the same way in board meetings. But there is a feminization of education and he'd argue that it's an issue because it gives girls an advantage but alienates boys that there's so few primary school teachers being male. And lastly, uh, Harris et al. Um, you can do the secondary school females tend to be more hardworking. You could do Mick, Robbie, and Garber. The bedroom culture has created an environment. Um, you could do Francis, effortless achievement. I'll leave that up to you to decide, but you've got a bit of option there. This shows that there is social selection. And this may be due to the treatment of boys via teachers or an environment that may mean not all want to engage or attend. So a little bit of a mixture there. Okay. Social selection. That one's never come up before. Probably does increase your chances slightly. Um, I hope you don't mind it. I think it's quite nice. A nice big range of knowledge as well, which I always find quite enjoyable. So we're now going to do the hidden curriculum, which is the opposite end of the spe uh, spectrum because it's come up loads. I think it's come up three times now. So the hidden curriculum as a 15 marker. So the hidden curriculum is uh, when it's when the norms and values taught in education, when the norms and values taught in education, the norms and values that are taught in education. So paragraph one, functionalism. The hidden curriculum 
creates social solidarity and consensus. I'm going to do Durkheim, Parsons, oops, Durkheim, Parsons, <laughs> Davis and Moore. You have a full plan of this, by the way. Um, at the end of that paragraph, we're going to say, well, this shows the hidden curriculum creates order and ensures society continues to function as we are all taught the same norms and values. Paragraph two, Marxists argue that the hidden curriculum makes you passive and docile. Got Bowles and Gintis. Althusser, Bowles and Gintis, education makes you passive and docile. Althusser, education is nothing more than ideological state apparatus. So I need those two Marxists, because again, Willis doesn't quite apply. He's about resistance. Bourdieu is not really technically one, he's just influenced. So this shows that the hidden curriculum ensures we accept capitalism. So the hidden curriculum ensures that we accept capitalism, that we are passive and docile, and this ensures the system is maintained and it prevents a revolution. So for Marxism, it ensures that we accept capitalism, it makes us passive and docile, and it ensures that we maintain the system and prevents a revolution because you're too passive and docile. Right, paragraph three, so we're gonna do feminism, which is the gender grid. That the hidden curriculum disadvantages girls. The Kelly, Science is packaged as a boy's subject. And we still use gender narratives, so lots of male pronouns. And Skelton argues that the hidden curriculum is responsible for perpetuating differences in subject choice. Okay. Kelly and Skelton, hidden curriculum is responsible for perpetuating all those differences in subject choice, which ultimately is part of the reason, not all, but part of the reason for that gender pay gap in work. Okay, so this shows that the hidden curriculum is the reason why girls don't perform as well in science and maths. And can explain partly why women on average earn 21% less than men. Okay. Right. Three paragraphs, three.
three, apart from the Marxism, but good three to two sociologists in each paragraph, three in the first one, three in the last one, and two in that middle one. Okay. Cultural deprivation is the same as cultural defects that we've already done. But I will just briefly get you summarising this. So with cultural deprivation, it again is when the culture of the group, so their norms, values and language are a disadvantage. So, paragraph one is when you don't have cultural capital. So, it's Bourdieu, Gerwitz, you have Sugarman, Gilborn and Ball. This shows that some groups may be considered culturally deprived as they don't have cultural capital that makes education familiar or can act as a shield against setting and streaming. Remember, Bulwu argues we still set and stream to generally please middle class parents who don't want their children disrupted, but also have the cultural capital to negotiate the system if their child's going to be put in bottom set. So it's quite really quite interesting. Paragraph two is that we consider some groups may be culturally defective if they don't have certain language codes. So Bernstein. Mo dude again. This shows that some groups may be considered culturally defective and may struggle to understand teachers, the content, curriculum, and exam questions. Paragraph three may be considered culturally defective if there isn't a value of education. So with this one, we've got Douglas again. Parental interest is the most important factor. Phillips and Palmer, child-centered and driver. But this shows that some groups may be considered culturally defective and may struggle and so maybe sorry considered culturally defective as there may not be a value of education and therefore they're not encouraged to complete homework and revision making them more successful I went through that one quite quickly just because it is actually the same as cultural defects before but quite keen as I've said a few times now I don't really want any gaps in that grid I want to reassure you that they're all in the same place even if they're kind of shorthand and summarized a little bit okay so the last one is meritocracy and with meritocracy meritocracy it's the same as equality of opportunity so Again, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this one because it, it really is the same. You're only going to get one. So with meritocracy, it's that the achievement is due to ability or effort and that the system is a fair one. Paragraph one, functionalism argue that it's a meritocratic system. Davis and Moore specifically mentioned that. 
Parsons, where well, we have to achieve a status. And three functions of education. This shows education is meritocratic. That we uh, we achieve due to ability and effort, and are assigned a job in work due to ability. Just expanding on that a little bit more there. Paragraph two will mark this again. Would veer at the suggestion of a visceral reaction to the suggestion that there's a meritocratic system. So paragraph two, that the system is now fair and differences are due to effort. So we're going to do gender again. So uh, for gender, I'm going to do Mitos and Brown. Girls are more hardworking. Again, it frustrates me that there's no explanation. So we're going to add McRobbie and Garba, but that's largely due to a bedroom culture. Um, Harris et al, secondary school females, and Francis is an issue of effortless achievement. So what we're suggesting with that sociologist is they're expecting effort. So I may be expecting effort with little effort, expecting high results, sorry, with little effort, getting tired. So this shows that there is a meritocracy in education. There is a meritocracy in education. Um, and that girls may be outperforming boys as they are working harder and more engaged. So that one only has two paragraphs, not three, uh, because um, there's very few like equality of opportunity that would suggest that. So please make sure that your uh, 50 marker grid is all lovely and full now with those summaries. If you do want to see full descriptions of those 50 markers in detail, just look back over your Google Classroom and they're on there. This is more of a shorthand summary so that as second years, it's all filled. And when you do your revision each week, it's, it's all there ready for you. Okay, folks, thank you so much. And I will see you soon.